Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of jazzy drumming, but not in jazz, exploring places that we might find some jazzier kinds of drumming in other genres. Mostly it's been rock and metal this week, and we're going to continue that, checking out some Imperial Triumphant. The song we're looking at is Metro Vertigo, live at the St. Vitrus Bar. Let's dive in and see what Imperial Triumphant is bringing to us today. Tonight you have been invited to bask in the ritual of Imperial Triumphant. I will welcome in the pleasure of the company. Okay, so we have a drum cam here. Also, that stage is immensely small. Very dissonant guitar work. I don't think this would be the studio production either. The vocals seem too low. We got some cool polyrhythms here. Rotorondo? Uh, maybe a brief fermata. A fermata is when you hold out a note longer than it's supposed to be and then return usually back to the original speed. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the drumming to turn a bit jazz here. This is certainly metal drumming all over the place. Interesting rising pattern on the guitars. Very tight, quick playing on the guitar, so it's difficult for me to really pick up what they're playing. It's just a flurry of sounds. Now, this is probably the moment I, it's kind of jazzy. The eighth note triplets on the bass kick though are the least jazzy part of it, what really roots it still in the world of rock and metal. I 
do love the way that he forms a pattern though. His, his rhythmic phrasing is phenomenal. So much intensity from small movements, though. I think that's what I, I'm really enjoying out of the drummer's performance here. More dissonance from the guitars. Very maximalist style of drumming. Whoa, geez, what is that? Yeah, so that was interesting. I'm glad I got to see the drumming. But I do think that the audio wasn't quite as good for a full song analysis. Uh, I found the guitars a little too difficult to really hear. And I haven't listened to a lot of Imperial Triumphant, but I have listened to at least one other music video of theirs. Uh, and I don't remember the audio being as muddy. So I do think that this is uh, something that, if nothing else, elevates the drums. But maybe the live setting also uh, made the audio just a little bit worse. Regardless, I don't have a lot of thoughts about the song in general. A lot of what the guitars were doing and the bass just sounded like atonal noise to me. There is a ton of dissonance going on in this track. I'm not even sure what the emotional resonance would be given that when I did hear any sort of harmonic or chordal information, it was none. <laughs> that is to say that it doesn't it doesn't pull from any sort of consonant harmony at all in this track. It's all very dissonant. And so it all comes across as very um, harmonically noisy to me. It's a lot of those gross chord textures. And uh, I don't usually use the word gross. It's a bit negative, I think, rather than more of a objective neutrality. But it's just, I think that's the best word for it. It's a very gnarly tone. That they end up getting with their guitars and if you're there for it yeah 100 i can take it in small doses uh post hardcore uses it usually as a sort of accent within a line i can i can deal with it like that maybe for a section but an entire song built off of that disharmonic writing it's too much for me it, it just comes across as as very uh well gross which hopefully is also sort of a positive thing maybe that's why people enjoy listening to it um and when it comes to the growling i couldn't really find any any rhyme or reason in that either the phrasings all felt very odd to me when the vocalist decided to come in didn't really make much sense but by the same token i didn't really have a strong concept of uh structure in here either Based on what the drumming was playing, or the drummer was playing, we had a few back-to-back -back different ideas. It felt linear. We did have one callback. There was one drum section. Um, it was like the third or fourth one that pulled back to the first, the, the intro drum section. Um, and then at the end, we semi-revisited something from earlier, but it's tough to say that the song goes on a specific pattern based on just one instrument's ideas. So I'm not too sure. Like I said, the guitars all sounded noisy to me all the time. All the same kind of noisiness. I had a tough time picking out specific riffs that I could say, oh, you know, this is the end of one idea. We're moving into something else here. It all sort of blurred together. And I felt 
no type of phrasing within the vocals. They just seemed to pop in and out whenever they wanted to. I don't necessarily know if I would have the same uh, lack of understanding of the track if I had listened to a studio version, and I'm kind of tempted to listen to the studio version now um, after I talk about the drumming a little bit, just to maybe get a better perspective on that. Maybe I will. Maybe I will, but I'm a bit lost at the end of this. It does seem like a video designed to emphasize the drumming, both auditorily and visually, and I think it does a fantastic job at that. So let's talk about the drumming. First of all, this dude is just a beast. It is my favorite kind of drumming in that it, it, it ends up being very melodic. There is still a beat kept, primarily housed within the bass kicks and the snare accents, which I think is very cool. Most of the time... When you watch a drummer, right hand is very cymbal based, whether it's crossing over to hit the hi-hat, which probably looks weird because of the way that my camera mirrors stuff, but trust me, this is my left. Oh, actually, no, if you were looking at me and I was playing drums, that would make sense. Yeah, so I'm hitting my hi-hat, and you got your crash, you got your ride, your china, a lot of right hand stuff. Your left hand, in the traditional rock stuff, is going to be for the snare. So you got your hi-hat, snare. Hi-hat, snare, right? This idea. Here, though, the snare, I feel, is hit with, with equal diversity of both hands. <laughs> Even within the same phrase, he'll hit it once with his left and then have to come over here to hit some cymbals, so he'll pull his right in and, and hit it over here. And it's just like this constant back and forth, alternating which hand hits with the snare. Part of this is to help with alternation of accents where the left hand might primarily be accenting on beats one and three, and the uh, right hand might primarily be accenting on two and four. So if you want to change where your snare accent is, rather than changing up uh, the rhythmic element of your hand, you just switch to another hand. But another part is that one hand might be doing something, so you have to pull the other in. Um, and it, it ends up being a, a visual feast to watch this dude, especially in that opening idea. And he is just all over his kit, both hands just constantly moving all around it, hitting all sorts of cymbals and toms, snare. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's like a work of performative dance. But also, you know, hitting stuff. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, from a visual element, it's it's just wonderful. And what comes out of that, to me, ends up being a bit more melodic. It isn't just boom, boom, ka, boom, boom, ka. Like, that's very rhythmic. And while we do have this rhythmic pulse through the accentuations here, there's a lot of coloring that goes on that makes these sections feel more linear. Like, it's this uh, um, an idea, a riff on drums, if you will, rather than what would typically be called a pattern. Technically, riffs are patterns too, in, in that, you know, your one or four bar idea is something you loop over and over. It is a pattern you lean into. But just the general concept of playing something that feels more like something you could play on a guitar, I think, is what really makes these drums stand out to me and what makes me fall in love with them. There's just so much going on in ways that feel like it's a linear journey. And I absolutely love that mixed with all the diversity of sounds because we are utilizing every single part of the drum kit. Like I had mentioned during the reaction, it's a very maximalistic style of drumming, trying to cram in as much as possible at any given moment. It's usually a consistent flurry of both of the legs and both of the arms, giving us this constant flow of eighths and even sixteenth notes at times, just cramming as much sonic information as possible from this drum kit into the song. It is exceptionally impressive to me that it can come across as light as it does, given all of this. And I think part of that comes through... Um, with one, the general dexterity of everything, but two, sort of the lightness of attack. That's one thing that I really love about this drummer. If you actually watch their arms, there's not a lot of arm movement going on. There's a lot of wrist movement for sure, but not a lot of arm. And this tells me, at least, that this dude has some sort of previous training on percussion instruments. Maybe not necessarily classical training, but I'd say it's quite possible that he he went to school 
for drums at one point in time. Maybe not throughout, you know, his entire middle and high school and, and you know, any college years or anything like that. But at least some information, maybe a year or a semester, learning how to play um, drums. Whether it's just a snare drum, maybe he played quads, I don't know. Uh, actually, the technique wouldn't be too far uh, divorced from even something like... Um, marimba xylophone glockenspiel something like that too so again i just looking at his form it's it's very standard very traditional um and so i think that's pretty cool because what it allows him to do is get the intensity of the hit through the velocity more so than uh distance all right because you watch some you watch some like thrash uh, not maybe not thrash heavy metal and there's lots of huge arm movements going on there. And they're trying to get as much speed as possible. And I think a lot of that just comes from being self-taught. Especially in the metal world where you watch people and they're just like hitting the drums as hard as they can. And so you try to emulate that. And this, he knows how to hit the drum to get a lot of sound out of it without actually dominating uh, the sound sphere. Without putting too much emphasis in it in the movement. And I love that. Like I said, it, it provides a lightness. It, it doesn't make the drumming any less extreme, any less aggressive, but there is a lightness to the attack that uh, kind of sh shines through as, I don't know, a minute characteristic to it. But it makes everything just feel aggressively dexterous. Does that make sense? Uh... You know, like a big muscle bodybuilder doing cartwheels and backflips. <laughs> it's like the best of both worlds somehow. Um, and, uh, I don't know, it just comes through in the sound. And, like I said, visually, it's just really impressive to see all this. But this also comes through in another form, and it's the contrast. The one moment of contrast this song has where we bring all the volume down quite a bit. And the drummer does this just by playing lighter almost all the snare sounds are ghost notes the bass kicks are just very lightly tapped to keep this triplet eighth note vibe going on and then there's a lot of cymbal work going on i had mentioned that this was probably the jazzy section and up to the point it was certainly the jazziest thing we had seen but it is definitely not jazz drumming <laughs> yeah there's just way too much snare and bass kick work going on. But, uh, you know, as far as as far as far this week's theme, right? So I mentioned this in the past two videos, starting the, the, the video off. I'll say, you know, this is the theme. I'm not really expecting much here. I'm not going to be, uh, what is it? I'm not going to be very rigid or upset about uh, the the videos that we get to watch the songs we get to listen to not being exactly jazz drumming because honestly i couldn't even suggest one song for the theme so i can't be too mad about it but i also can't really imagine pure true jazz drumming showing up really anywhere except for something like this where the song just completely changes to something else maybe something loungier or jazzier um not necessarily what I would expect is uh, songs to incorporate jazzy drumming without really changing what the guitars or vocalists or anybody else is doing. And so we do get that here. The song completely changes and that's where this style of drumming comes in. But it also isn't really jazzy. It definitely tries to be jazzier and I think it moves in that direction. But the thing with jazz music is that there's almost no bass drum our bass kick stuff going on. It's very, very sparsely used. Um, and same goes with the snare, although it will be used a little more often. Lots of ghost notes, uh, sparse accents. A lot of the accents are going to come through on the cymbals, which is just so bizarre for rock and metal drummers. because That's just not where accents go. Cymbals are used to keep time. Your accent points are your bass kick and your snare. And this is the huge inversion of that. But we do see the ghost notes here. We do see sparse snare accents. Uh, we do see a massive change to utilizing more cymbals, although he was already using a ton of cymbals to start with. So it's it's definitely jazzier. I'll give it that. 
And it was cool to see this style, this maximalist style, get reduced down and still incorporate a lot of that um, usage of the entire kit. It isn't like the drummer decides to bring the volume down and the intensity down and then just like stick to ride and snare or something. He's still all over the kit, still playing all the cymbals. Um, and it was neat for the song. And it was neat for the song to sort of change up its harmonic pace and its intensity and its atmosphere a little bit while also allowing this massive shift in dynamic writing in order to create this contrast that I personally needed. Um, I like the drumming here, but it really is the only thing that, that works for me. Everything else is just a hair bit too harsh and bringing some of those ideas down and finding something a bit more pleasing to the ears was welcome. I'm going to take a second to listen to the studio version real quick. I'll do a quick comment on that and then we will check out some lyrics. All right, so that was sort of like listening to it for the first time. I heard a lot of new stuff in there. First of all, the main thing here is that the dissonant guitar work is a constant rising and falling in different directions between the two guitars with dissonance included in that. So one starts from a higher note and so it goes the other one starts from a lower note goes and the two of them doing this sort of kaleidoscopic idea of this dissonant sound to me perfectly captures the idea of vertigo the idea of being up at a really tall spot looking over the edge and this sort of bouncing back and forth of you know how high are you off the ground feeling sick from that um it, it captures that vibe so well I don't know, it's, the song's called Metro Vertigo, so the word was sort of already injected in my mind a little bit, but I think I still would have picked up on that regardless. It is a perfect sonic representation of that sort of concept. Um, but aside from this, I have picked up some structure as well. This idea shows up three times, right at the beginning, a couple sections later and to wrap the song up i think this is supposed to be our verse riff i don't necessarily think that we end on a verse but we do use the verse riff in the outro we have a chorus section that is uh, just a lot of galloping they just pick one note and gallop a lot on it um we have this over and over and over and over. We also have some interesting vocals here that we didn't hear at all in the live version. It's a, it's sort of like a group vocal, two, three layers at least, but with a ton of reverb. It sounds more like um, a film is trying to create the sound of a deity speaking to mortals. It's deep, it's low, there's a rumble, there's, there's reverb. It just keeps expanding out and out and out. It is a massive sound that goes well with the massive sound the guitars have. It's interesting to hear that juxtaposed to the growling that we have in every other section. And it's this part that I think is the chorus, which gives us a verse, chorus, verse, chorus idea. However, in the middle of those, we do have a short little guitar solo. I don't really have much of an interpretation of it. It's just, it's just a solo. <laughs> um... Then we have our jazz section after this, and it brings us back to, uh, I believe it was the gallop into the vertigo part, and then the song wraps up. So I do believe that it, they just have some cool riffs here, some heavy ideas, they just mash them together in the order that makes sense to them, and then wrap the song up. It's possible the lyrics may lead into this a little bit, sorry, lean into this a little bit, but I don't really have an interpretation of the music other than rule of cool metal stuff, and they are doing some cool stuff with their instruments, all of them. Right, I've already praised the drums enough, but now that I've heard the guitars in their full range, yeah. It's not my cup of tea, but from an artistic perspective, they're doing some cool stuff. The bass is also doing some wild things. Um, I don't know, lots of slides, bends maybe. Uh, there's one part where the bass is so loud that there's there's cracking, there's distortion, there's there's clipping going on. There's just this this white noise at the. I mean, I guess it it feels like it's at the top of the song, but the bass is so low. 
that it would probably be it probably makes more sense to say there's this crackling at the bottom but to me it feels like the top i don't know and that went on for like an entire section i i don't i don't know <laughs> it's an interesting choice and it has to be a choice they left it in the bass doesn't clip anywhere else but it's just a gnarly tone really is so yeah i have a much better appreciation for the song after being able to listen to the original production of it uh and mix more so than the remix with the drums in focus and uh some of the auxiliary things taken out like there's also a two bar piano run that happens somewhere in this track too that i don't think was in the uh live version uh those group vocals weren't really in the live version or at least i didn't hear them there's a lot of cool little things so if you enjoyed the drum cam version already Go ahead and check out their official video or the studio version. Check it out on you know, a streaming platform or something. Because uh, I think you're going to find some more stuff you like. I will say though that the drums are a little bit low for everything that they're doing. They're just not as present as any of the guitars or bass are in the studio version. So I am glad that we got to check out uh, one with the drums bumped up a little bit in the mix. Because there's some really impressive stuff going in on in there that I probably would have missed if we checked out the music video. So, next up, lyrics. Alright, here we have a song that seems to be anti-capitalist in a lot of ways. But, I'll be honest, that's only grasping at a couple of lines here and there, which I've pieced together into that reading i do not have a strong grasp on every single stanza here but the beginning does say view the new age where society strides for all to see we make great waves higher praise our ancient offering temples to the old dead gods the idea that society is going to keep pushing away from the old style and find new ways to do things the next stanza says, move forward with cyclical progress, a true blessing. I love this idea where progress isn't necessarily taking steps forward, but reinventing the wheel. Sometimes it certainly does feel that way where things just continue to get rehashed and regurgitated and is called progress. I certainly feel that today. When did this song come out, by the way? 2022. Okay, so it's, yeah, very much critique of modern society. Modern being now. The chorus comes in, says, build, build, now, now, our gift to Master Bale, plutocracy refined. This, I think, defines the entire song. Plutocracy is uh, a, a government or, not a it's a people who are ruled by the rich. And so we have this concept, we'll actually see in a couple stanzas it kind of moves into this idea even more it says radio auto innovates the snake eats its own tail so we have the ouroboros which is the concept of the repeated cycle bringing this idea back into regurgitating things uh, never pushing forward always just moving in that cycle there says there's so little to share there's nothing really worth talking about in what's being progressed these days but i like this double entendre here it says so little to share yet shares are the teachings of course we're talking about uh stock shares um, and that bringing people money and that money is the only thing to teach people finances the best way to get uh to money to get money because money is power it's what drives the plutocracy yeah it's this whole idea that those on top are not doing anything to benefit the other 99 people. They're just creating this cycle, this perpetuality of progress, which isn't helping anybody, but is helping put money in their pockets. And so we return back to the chorus after this one. This is the second time we hit it. Build now. It's our gift to Master Bale. Plutocracy defined. And we finish the track up with the phrase, Metro Vertigo. I'm not quite sure what the phrase is supposed to represent. I mean, Metro is uh, modern day ideas. But how does that pair with Vertigo? The feeling of, uh, you know, being thrown off guard from being in a high state. And Well, actually, if we look at 
society as elevating. Every time we innovate on something, society gets better. We are building up on what we were before. There's definitely a point where we're too high <laughs> and we begin to have negative repercussions. Oxymoron. Not oxymoron. Uh, what's the one where it's just repetitive? Uh, anyways, regardless. Um, yeah, there's there's repercussions to being this high. It's not all positive anymore. I wonder if that's what they're leaning on, what they're alluding to with that phrase Metro Vertigo, that we've gone too high. We need to back it down a little bit and return to the way things were, not totally blowing out the entire building, but you know, just kind of removing some of those top levels which aren't helping anyone. Yeah, so like I said, I, I don't really know that there's any ways that this ties back to the music, but I do like the idea of the vertigo sounding guitar riffs that work well with the entire theme and title on this. All right, that was, that was a heavy one. <laughs> Those are my thoughts on Imperial Tramp Vince Metro Vertigo. What did you think of this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives on the track. Toss all that stuff down in the description box. Above that, in put it in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this one. We do have another video coming up next. Special selection. There we go. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Um, you can check that out. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 9 p.m. UTC as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.